Genshin portrays sword, bow, and spear arts with the fantasy-esque style quite well, combining flashy motions and attacks with vision powers, and most of these styles revolve around very interesting backstories on how and why they were made in the first place. The backstories of some of these arts are reflective of their movesets, and for this video, we'll go through them. However, quick disclaimer, I am no martial arts expert. Any and all references I make of martial arts is through my own research as well as my own interest in martial arts, which is mostly HEMA. Feel free to correct me for any mistakes so I can make the appropriate corrections in the comments. Also, we're only going to be covering Inazuma's martial arts for this video. So let's begin. Probably the most famous blade art at the moment in Inazuma, and one we have decent information about is the Iwakura blade art. It was created by Iwakura Doke as a means to gain a victory against Teruyo of the Yogo Tengu. Currently, it is one of the four famous martial arts schools in Inazuma, and it has many students who we actually met and kind of killed. Well, it depends if you see the traveler killing his enemies or beating or just beating them, which means I. There might be some students left, but we basically, at least in the storyline, we killed a lot of them. Anyway, the sword art uses quick EI attacks or drawing techniques in order to match the speed of the Tengu. Iwakura Doke taught this art and founded the Iwakura school after successfully laying a blow on Teryu, and it has since been passed on through their clan. The Iwakura art's signature sword skill is known as Tengu Sweeper. It is the sword skill Iwakura Doke developed over the years in order to be able to land a blow against Teryu. Now the Iwakura art is a reference to Yagyu Shinkage Ryu, which also has a sword technique of the same name. Not only that, but the backstory of Iwakura Doke is likely a reference to a Japanese folklore about Yagyu Munetoshi, also known as Shinsuke, who was a master of Yagyu Shinkage Ryu in which the folklore tales that he had a duel with the Tengu and upon slashing the Tengu with incredible speed, the Tengu disappeared and what appeared in turn was a huge rock that was cut into two pieces, similar to how Iwakura Doke slashed Teruyo. After which Teruyo had nothing left to teach him and in turn he taught other students the Iwakura art. You'll usually see the Iwakura art being used by the Kairagi and sometimes Narukami soldiers in the story. Next, we have some sojutsu or spear arts with the Kitain art. It was created by Kitain Bunso as a means to defend Yashiori Island as well as employ a unique style of spearmanship never before seen. While traditional sojutsu would focus on speed, precision, reach, and piercing attack, the Kitain arts are more broad in scope, sacrificing a normal spear's ease of use for greater power and weight in its spear tip allowing it to perform tasks that would normally break a normal spear. The Kitain art is likely a reference to Hozoin Ryu, a Japanese spear martial art founded by Hozoin Ine, a warrior monk who invented the Jumonji Yari, or the cross spear. In the teachings of the Hozoin Ryu, it is said that the spear is characterized by its cross-shaped spearhead and is used to stick, to twist down, to cut down, to beat down, and to slide, two-dimensionally and three-dimensionally. Although I would like to note that the real spearheads aren't as big as that of the Kitain Cross. The teaching also expresses the spear arts of the Hozoin Ryu in a poem that says, It can be a spear to stick, it can be a pole sword to mow, it can be a sickle to cut down, and it never fails to hit the target in any case. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if Toma uses the Kitain art specifically, but it could be as there aren't really any other spear arts known at the moment. Now for the next one, this actually took a bit of time to research because there isn't a direct reference about this art, but I think I found some that is close enough. Because next, we have the Watatsumi martial arts created by Tozano. Tozano's arts are not exactly the name of the sword style itself, but rather Tozano is the founder of the two sword styles we'll talk about next. In case you don't know who Tozano is, check out my previous video about him. In any case, Tozano's arts are split into two, which he created himself. They are known as the Getsumon and Yushio. 
Sadly, not much is known about this arts, even though they are still used today by the people of Watatsumi Island. That said, I did find an interesting martial arts style while trying to research this that may have some semblance of closeness, but do know that what I'm about to reference for this is heavy speculation, so take it with a grain of salt. I believe that both Getsu Mon and Yushio are named after Mon and Ayame respectively, with Getsu Mon as a direct reference while Yushio is an indirect reference through the meaning of evening tide. So instead of looking for references to the two martial arts directly, because I couldn't find any, I instead looked at Tozano, the creator of these two martial arts, and I believe he is a reference to Chuzano, a king in the Ryukyu kingdom, because of how Tozano and Chuzano are both titles that is held by a ruler. So following this, I think that the two martial arts is a reference to Ryukyu's martial arts which is Ryukyu Kobujutsu, which is a martial art that teaches ways to use weapons used by the commoners, specifically farmers. According to legend, this art form was popularized as a means to fight back against their oppressors during the time when the Satsuma Samurai established dominion over the Ryukyu kingdom. Though not a formal rebellion like the Watatsumi army, it may have been what inspired it. The style teaches the practical use of multiple weapons such as the Bo, Kama, Sai, Nunchaku, and Tonfa. So I think Getsumon may be a reference to this. While Yushio may be a reference to Tegumi, which is a form of wrestling from the Ryukyu Kingdom as well. Which may be a reference to IMS ability to wrestle sea creatures. Though I must say again, these two styles and references are heavily rooted in my own speculation. There's just not much information about the sword styles in game at the moment as we don't really have a character that uses Watatsumi styles currently. Moving on from that though, we have the Shindyu art and the Kujirai art. These two are closely related and you'll see in a bit. While these two aren't exactly combat styles, I think they're worth exploring as well. The Shindyu art was created by Shosen, who featured during the Phantom Flow event. Instead of martial arts for combat, this is more of a technique for training and is borderline the basis of certain magics or manipulation of energy and imagination. Shosen learned and created this technique when he visited Natlan, where he witnessed shadow boxing, where the locals of Natlan would spar with imaginary opponents. However, it took it a step further with some sort of method that unfortunately we aren't privy to yet. He was able to make shadow simulations so real that it would pose great danger to not only the enemy but the user as well. Imagined weapons would be able to slice through the body. Imagined enemies would be able to kill the user as well. The art form is not even limited to opponents alone. It can even simulate wind direction, weather, mechanisms, and even ley line disorders. Due to this, the students of Shosen would fear the art form itself as they could potentially die from it. And because of that, they would abandon the art form. However, there are two people who have learned a little bit of Shinryu and formed their own branch of the art form. Weirdly enough, these two other people were Kid Kujirai, the kid who likes playing with the Temari Bowl, and Alice. Yes, that Alice. With the help of Shosen, they created their own version of the Shinryu, called Kujirai Art, which is a less lethal version and instead makes use of a Temari Bowl as sort of like a weapon, but more for playing. Interestingly, Klee's bombs are also based off the Kujirai Art probably taught by Alice. It does scare me to think what kind of mayhem Alice could do with her imagination. Something to think about as we get more tidbits about how powerful Alice could actually be. Next we have a long dead art form known as the Mist Splitter art, created by Takamine the Mist Splitter. It is one of the four famous historical martial arts of Inazuma. Sadly, not much is known about the Mist Splitter sword art because Takamine was never able to pass down his knowledge of the sword art. However, we do know that the Mist Splitter art teaches both bow and sword arts, with both techniques learned from training with the Yogo Tengu. 
The sword art was strong enough to earn him the title of Hatamoto for the Raiden Shogun Baal. The bow art was described as fierce, unpredictable, elegant, and beautiful. It was said to be able to unleash thunderbolts with the bowstring's pulse, and its arrows would soar through the clouds unfettered. It was passed down to Asase Hibiki before Takamine's disappearance during the Cataclysm. Sometime after the Cataclysm though, it was rumored that Takamine returned to Inazuma to fulfill his promise and reunite with Hibiki. But Takamine emerged from the abyss, possibly corrupted. Hibiki would slay Takamine with her bow as a final act of saving him. It is also unconfirmed if Kujo Sara uses the same bow art, but it is possible since Kujo Sara herself is a Tengu. Next up, we have the Mekyo Shisui. It is one of the newer sword arts that is getting popular within Inazuma. However, its current master, Domon, who had beat the last master, Anzai, lost the will to further the art due to his vision getting taken away. After the quest A Sword Master's Path is paved with broken blades, he found the will to continue teaching his students. Mekyo Shisui itself is, in real life, a kind of philosophy or mindset that is practiced with arts such as kendo. In their kanji, meikyo means a clear mirror, or directly a shining mirror, an imagery where you see no dust, cloud, or condensation within its reflection, and shisui means still water, where water that is still can reflect anything like a mirror. In short though, the philosophy teaches to have a clear mind and ensure that you will not misjudge anything. Next, we have a rather quick one, as this one is an exclusive sword art for the Kamisato family, known as the Kamisato art. Currently, we only know of one master who uses this art, which is Kamisato Ayaka. And if I remember correctly, Kamisato Ayato, Ayaka's brother, uses the same kind of art, but with a spear. So, we can safely say that the Kamisato art covers both spear and sword weapons, and maybe even a little bit more. Their teachings say that none may deflect a swing that has been practiced a thousand times. So when they practice their art, their philosophy in training is that for every failed swing, you must do 50 more. This applies to both spear and blade. The goal of the Kamisato art is to be able to defeat your opponents in a single attack. Also, fun fact, Kazuha developed his own sword style and he just calls it my own sword style. Before we get to the last one, we have a quick one known as the Yuhu Arts, which is the art of the Shu Matsuban ninjas like Sayu, which is an art form created to make fun of your enemies. Yep, ninjas I guess. Anyway, on to the last one, and by far the most important one, known as the Origin Sword Art. This sword art was created by Bilzebul, the Raiden Shogun and current Electro Archon of Inazuma. The sword art focuses on Naginata and sword fighting, as well as sword crafting techniques of the highest grade. It is called the Origin because all other sword arts that we just talked about originated from this sword art as a base, and all other schools are practically variations of this sword art. The Origin's signature sword art is one that instills fear among any who face it and it is called the Muso no Hitotachi. The sword art itself is a possible reference to the Kyo Hachi Ryu, a sword art form founded by Kiichi Hogen and is a sword art form from which all martial arts school in West Japan are said to have originated. This sword art is by far one of the most interesting ones because we can actually see it in the game by drawing the Muso no Ishin using Raiden Shogun. And when you use her attacks, you can see the basic movements of Kendo used in the sequence, meaning her main moveset is basically perfected versions of the basics, which I think is a really interesting way of doing her sword art as the basis of all other sword arts. And that's it. What do you guys think about Inazuma sword art styles? Although they are cool and flashy, you have to understand that these are more fantasy driven sword styles. So they may appear a little impractical because of, you know, they have spins in their moves and stuff like that. But I think it's still a pretty cool way to do the fantasy style of sword attacks. 
Is it practical? Probably not, but it's still pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think though in the comments down below. If you liked the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, it really really helps out the channel. And all the references I used are in the description down below. Thank you for watching, see you next time.